As we all know, Blue Hybrid is back, but how does it fare with the current meta all the way back from BT7? Let's find out. Okay, so for our first matchup today with the Blue Hybrid deck, we're playing, be playing against the Lugamon deck. And seeing our opening hand right here isn't the greatest. Even though we're going second, we do have a rookie, we have a Tamer to work with, but I can see that we had an Azulamon, we also had a Mirage Gal. We don't really want to be seeing our level 6s as early in the stage of the game, especially we don't really play a lot of those in the Blue Hybrid deck. What we're really trying to go for is searching cards, rookies, Siakomons, Madoki Betamons, and some Tamers that we can actually play and get a lot of value off. Ideally would be our Davis or even Sora Joe, and maybe a Tommy as well, which we did have there. But here we're just going to try and go for a better hand. Looks a little bit better. We do have Bokumon, which is much more ideal because like I mentioned, we want to have searching cards. Generally, when it comes to this matchup, it's actually really, really tough for the Lugamon deck to sort of play against Blue Hybrid, especially with it coming back right here. It can keep the deck in check a lot. And the main reason is because Blue Hybrid has access to one of the two strongest floodgates, such as Madoki Betamon and Siakomon at the same time, which counters a lot of other decks heavily. Siakomon is a great counter in this format, especially when it comes to against any decks that play training cards, and most decks actually do. As for Madoki Betamon, it pretty much does the same thing. It counters anything with generic memory gain, and that's something that Lugamon really heavily relies on. And here we're going to really showcase how it really hard counters the Lugamon deck as this particular game as it continues to go on. But here with the Bokomon, we saw an Astrabimon earlier, we're able to find like a Tamer, which is really good value, getting those two hits. And right away, we're just gonna start chipping away as much as we can with Astrabimon, with the Bukomon egg being one of the best eggs from BT14, or in general, hands down, moving forward for most blue decks, because it's always gonna constantly have jamming, it's gonna utilize its jamming capability, as long as even our opponents doesn't have a Digimon on board. And also, the opponent must have a Digimon with more sources than our Digimon in order to sort of overcome and not have that effect, which is really, really difficult. There, we saw them use like Miss Memory Boost and stuff like that. So we decided to also hard play that Madoki Betamon, really showcasing the limited amount of resources that they can really utilize even after setting up. Lugamon's really all about setting up, finding pieces, having lots of tons of memory gain, having lots of... Uh, Wisdom training, I believe, which reduces their stuff. And here we're basically forcing them to answer the board here. They made a pretty good play going into Fangmon and they couldn't be forced to push up with Lugamon. And now they can go into that Hell Lugamon to go for the combo to swing over our Strappy and popping a Modoki, dealing with it. So as quickly as possible is really important because then you want to be setting up for your next stack so then you can turbo into your full OTK potential combo before we sort of like apply too much pressure against them. Hell Lugumon's great for also like cycling through cards. So a really good answer right there alongside with Analog Youth. So we're kind of sort of back to square one. But this is really neat because by playing these cards, we're just going to be setting up some Tamers. Hopefully, eventually we can go into some hybrids, which we do see right here, which is going to be really good. Going into a level four hybrids later with alongside Pokemon is just really good value because we can Digivolve for, for them into them effectively for free and then make some attacks and sort of control the board continuously. Finding a Siakomon right there is great too, but I think as soon as the opponent saw that, that means it kind of renders their wisdom trainings useless, and they still really need to find alternative ways to gain memory. Here we draw into another Madoki Betamon, which we know for sure that's something that we're going to want to be playing. Continuing to swing, chip away at their security bit by bit, with Siako, with the Bukumon egg underneath, is just really good here. Here at the side, I wanted to sort of go for a little bit of aggression, just try to chip away as much security as possible and then set up for lethal the next turn. And at this moment, with both Siako and Madoki Betamon, it's just very difficult again for them to play once again. Very lucky that we found the other one, which is why we play quite a handful of numbers of these guys in this specific, specific format, just because of how much value they really give. And the other thing I was going to mention about the Pokemon, this Pokemon just stayed on the board ever since turn one. Especially when it comes to this matchup, because they're forced to address our Seattle and our Madoki Betamon, there's no opportunities for them to address our Pokemon. Therefore, the longer the Pokemon sits, the greater the value it comes for us as well. Because every turn we, every time we just digivolve into our hybrid, we're always getting into hybrid for free here. Again, they're just really forced to do something at this point to answer our board because if they don't, it's all over for them and they really just have to go for it. They're going to have to try to swing over, they have to use their AG combos, going to the Lugarmon, 
and all that stuff. They can try to gain as much memory as possible, but AG is only going to give them so much because it's from a tamer. It's very difficult again because they're contemplating. They can't use their boost right there sitting there because if they could, they could then potentially go into that full combo and basically like wipe us out as well. They have no choice but to swing over here and have to try to sort of deal with our board a little bit, take out our Digimon, but also try to set up a bit of defense at the same time. So they do go into Soul Lugarmon right here with the Bowmon's effect and tra after trashing a card from their hand too. And with Soul Lugarmon, they can play something back from their trash. And here they have a Fascomon, which is a blocker. So it's enough to sort of stop the attacks right there, but passing us to three memory. And then we go up to five because of Sora Joe here. And we have a lot to work with. And at this point, we can just Digivolve effectively and just try to swing, go into Beowulfmon as well. And we can easily just bounce that Fascomon because it is level four or lower. Here contemplating how we just want to clean their board at the same time because we can go for a little bit safer play if we want to. Their blockers just render useless there. They do find an analog so they can search a little bit here, but it doesn't mean anything. We could just go for game here and swing, but we want to go for safer. Again, clearing their board, going to Mirage, showcasing how great it really is because they search so much. We gain a ton of memory effectively just for free. Now we can just go for game very safely and quickly just like that. Check out the latest drop with the Divine Warriors and Regal Guardians playmats. We got tons of other cool merch on the Evolve store. And if you're located in the US or Canada, you can even get free shipping for orders over $100. Thank you guys for all the support and this wouldn't be happening without you. So for the second feature game, we're going to be playing up against the new Maimon with a bunch of brand new support right here. So looking at our beginning hand and our opening hand, what we have is pretty good. We got some searching tamers, we got a Gomamon that we can work with, and we can cycle through cards. And as a matter of fact, we're also going second. So pretty good to sort of start us off, which is always going to be really great. And they're just going to fire us off with going with their defense training. We're just going to go into our Gomamon and just play a Davis as soon as possible, finding some Digimon pieces because right now we are missing other cards such as you know some of the hybrids at the moment. But we did find ourselves a Siakomon from that search and I felt like it was just a really good priority because grabbing that Siakomon will immediately shut off that defensive training right there. Kind of interesting how the opponent didn't really notice or think about that maybe they could have used their defensive training a little bit earlier but maybe it's just not as memory efficient for them in that particular scenario at the moment gomomon is just an ultra mvp because at the start of main we just get to take away any source that we want from them and then we get to attack into them with jamming with bukumon and can't be blocked even though that new maimon right there is a blocker itself we could have crashed if it was able to block but because it wasn't able to we were able to go for that security very easily and here we're just contemplating that we need to kind of protect this Gomamon because I know they're going to want to attack into it later on, no matter what. So we're going to cycle through that Davis. We're going to Digivolve into Kumamon out there, take away their bottom source right there, and then give them a little bit more memory to work with here either way. So they could go ahead and we play another Davis and passing them to three. Here, I think there was a little bit of a mistake. They should have gained an extra memory because of Satsuki here at this moment, uh, which they didn't. And apologize for that. We totally forgot during the time of the game here, but they attempt to swing into a new Maimon, wanting to crash into the Gomamon, which is going to give them the best value they can because the new Maimon would have, you know, have the undulation effects. But here where, where we blast Digivolved, we went into Zudamon Ace, returning it back to the hand essentially. And it's just a huge counter for them because here for Blue Hybrid, we're either controlling, stunning and bouncing their low end stuff which makes it very difficult for them to play. I think, like I mentioned, they didn't gain the memory from Sasuke earlier, but I think we Converse here and realized that they wouldn't have a different play anyways, because uh, they would just still want to hard play these new Mons in the end, which still benefits us because we can still continue to control the board. Looping back to us our turn here, we're actually contemplating if I want to Digivolve to Siakomon in the back, or do I want to Digivolve to Strabimon? I was contemplating, hey, maybe I want to kind of hard play the Siakomon as soon as possible so we can shut off that defense training right there but here we found ourselves in Ikakumon which I think we can really utilize and capitalize off of to showcase how good this card really is of course we don't get to strip the sources down but we get to stun something from attacking for for the next turn which is great and we swing in with jamming as well and we have Golemon which can float back and then we're going to end the turn by playing that Siakumon to again, stop them from being able to use the defense training. Now this time they get gain the memory from Satsuki here. They're gonna push up here 
and sort of see what they can work their way up to for this particular deck. And here we're sitting in a pretty good position. We're controlling the board. The pace of the game is slowed down a little bit to in our favor. And when it comes to blue hybrid, it's a really, really strong mid game and late game type of deck because the later it is, the more resources we have to work with. It ran here this time with Numimon, really hoping it for it to be deleted, but unfortunately ran into the Solrai, stripping off the sources that they have and stunning their entire board from attacking for the rest of the turn as well. It's just really ultra unlucky, but it's just really favoring us at this moment because we got lots of bodies, we got lots of pressure. They know they're going to have to try and address us either way, but at the same time, you know, they're, they're going to have to think really hard because now they, we surprise them with a Zudomon Ace. Chances are we might have a second one, which really has to get them thinking to see, find a way to get rid of our bodies bit by bit. Did you volume to Monzaemon is actually pretty good because at least with the Monzaemon and the Numemon deck, there's a bit of built in removal just because Monzaemon does minus 3000 DP to one of our Digimon and also can give like security minus one as well at the same time, which is kind of really neat. And by doing so, they're, I think again, they're just contemplating, you know, maybe they want to swing in over into a Yukakumon right here because they really don't want to get rid of it. But it looks like they're trying to attempt to go ahead. Actually, they can't even swing. I forgot. They completely got stunned. So their only option is actually going to Shin Monzaemon right here. But they were about to use the defensive training to sort of reduce the cost. But however, they can't because unfortunately, Shin Monzaemon is actually not a black Digimon. Therefore, there's a little bit of clashing when it comes to color synergy. So they actually can't end up using it. So here they're hoping to recover a little bit, stall out a little bit. And by recovering, they also get to minus security one across our entire board so that, you know, we can't really attack into them. So again, you know, slowing down the game pace, which honestly favors us here. We have quite a few plays. We see Madoki as well. We're going to go start off with a Sora Joe because we have a little bit of extra memory to work with, because right with that, we can use it to strip down all the sources to deal with that Shin Monzaemon. And we don't want the Shin Monzaemon to have a Monzaemon source either, because when the Monzaemon is underneath it, they can utilize it when attacking on Shin Monzaemon and then send anything that we have back to back to our security, which potentially can be a Zudomon ace. And then we're going to have to go ace overflow, which is not really what we want to do. So we're going to continue to keep it in check, keep it in control. Swing with Kaku, like we saw there, stun them down and take out their sources and continue to jam at the same time. However, no checks were made because we're under security minus one over there, just so you guys could see. So here they're again back in a really tough position. This time there's no floodgates around. So I think they should really try to utilize the defense training there and maybe see what they can do. But they're really, really afraid as well, because like Zudomon Ace is just such an incredibly good card if we have it there. No, it doesn't really matter what they do, right? They try to swing at us. We're going to counter them. We're going to end up bouncing their stuff back to their hand as well afterwards. So they really don't have a choice. Surprisingly, I mean, we didn't even have a second Zudomon A, so they probably realize here. But with Gomamon's effect, Inheritable is still really good because it can always float back out just like this. It's just incredibly insane. Right here, they decide to tuck in Satsuki underneath. I think they're hoping to maybe potentially reboot it. So by digivolving into Platinum Numemon right here, they could sort of potentially even retain turn if they have a Numemon in hand to sort of trash from. But it looks like, unfortunately, they don't have it. And uh, having it, it's going to be a huge deal because now, oh, they do, they do, they do, they do have one. So they were able to retain their turn here, which is really, really good uh, off from the drawing from Digivolving. And here they just have to find a way to pass us back to three. Essentially, they play down another Sasuke. Uh, but we do gain a ton of memory because of Sora Dro as well at the same time. Here we're just conversing as well, just saying maybe it's just better that they don't reboot because in the end, we're just going to be trash all their sources right there. Uh, even with Goma Monstar main as well, which is really good. We can just get rid of them and blocker is not going to affect us at all. So with this amount of memory, the Sora Dro and Davis combination is just absolutely insane. So here I'm just going to kind of contemplate to go straight into the aggressive power play, showcasing Azula Mong with the comeback of how strong it really is in this deck and how good it really is, stripping all their sources, one of them each, and we're able to check for security plus two here, essentially going down for three checks. And we do run into a Doramon. They could have some security bombs, but we're just going to go for it. We're really good. We have two more extra swings after that too. And we still definitely have a hybrid in our hand if we have to go into to for an extra swing. So easy like that, taking down them 
very, very quickly. The one thing I love about the Digimon card game is that there's so many cards, even from the older sets such as BT7, are still viable in today, which makes deck building super, super fun. What do you guys think? If you want to see more gameplay videos of BT14, Fenrir Lugamon, Digipolis, Angels, Wargreymon, all that jazz, definitely check out all the other gameplays right here, right now. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys have a great day, great night, wherever you are. See you in the next video. And this is Vault, signing out.